Now we are ready for shoot. It's uh, getting me nervous. <laughs> The heavy ball and relatively light counterweight result in the missile landing dangerously close to the trebuchet. Well, yeah, I mean, we knew that there wasn't enough weight in, really, didn't we? It was just an experiment. The counterweight is not uh, so heavy. We yeah. must put two bag more, yep. two tons. Of, of sand. Yes, of sand, yeah. yes. Two more tons of sand are added. I don't think there's enough weight for it to go really well yet. This machine wants a lot of weight, in 12 tons probably, to make it go properly. Renault thinks if we keep putting little bits in, he might just get there without busting the axle, which is natural, of course, because it's his machine. Fair enough. We are going to get a good shot. I'm sure, sure, sure. Renault's optimism is justified. The missile falls just a few yards short of the wall and a bit to the right. The team decides to give it one more day. But the next morning starts with snow, followed by a heavy downpour. Well, basically, we're at the last day. We've got... We've got between the rain and the mud, we've got a rigger's nightmare. Uh, it's, it's really taking its toll on the ropes. The, the mud grinds in and it starts tearing up the fibers. The, the water helps make the ropes stretch. Uh, if you look around the place, there's ropes in the mud and no rigger likes seeing that. So uh, We're doing the best we can to keep our ropes clean, but it's an uphill battle. Last night's final shot was short of the wall because it was thrown too high. Renault believes the sling is slipping off its prong too soon. So to delay release and lower the trajectory, the prong is bent forward. We've got the right amount of loft, we've got the right amount of range, we're just missing the target off to the side. For days, Renault has suspected that his trebuchet is pointing just to the right of the wall. But the loaded machine is too heavy to shift, and he faces the possibility that he may have to go home, having achieved only a near miss. At the last minute, Marcus offers a solution. If we had our preferences, we'd uh, be able to move the machine over a little bit, but we're afraid of shattering the machine, particularly with all the weight in the basket. So we're going to move the channel of the ball a little bit to the side so we can change our angle of attack. The range is good, but we just want to shift it over to the left of it. By shifting the channel that holds the ball slightly to the left, they hope to redirect the missile. It works. Almost. Another three feet and Renault would have had a direct hit. Unless shifting the channel was just a fluke, one more nudge to the left should bring the trebuchet right on target. Go, baby! Come on! Oh, that looks good. That's right. <laughs> After two throws, which are slightly high of the wall itself, Renault orders a minute adjustment of the prong in order to lower the trajectory. With frayed ropes and a storm threatening to close down the siege, everything now hangs on Renault's ability to quickly get on target. Bullseye on the battlements. Well done. Well done. 
This whole wall, if you run your eye down here, it's bellied out. Just cracks all through it. Anybody yeah. standing back here would have been mincemeat. Ah, oui, ça c'est un bon coup, ça. In a real siege, it would only be a matter of time before the wall is reduced to smithereens. In terms of the kind of dialogue that existed between attack and defense, it is very clear now to me that the appearance of the trebuchet on the scene shifted that balance radically in favor of attack. I've gained a tremendous respect for the medieval engineers. They were able to build a frightfully powerful and highly accurate and easily adjustable machine. If you're under siege, you've got to try to knock these things out before they're actually built. Because once they're built, you're sunk. Well, uh, the trebuchet is this big machine who can block the wall. And uh, also, a trebuchet must be the uh, wolf wall. Wolf wall? Wolf wall. <laughs> It's so difficult. We must change this name. Whole <laughs> wolf. <laughs> it is clear from the experiment that both types of trebuchets work. Because it could so easily be increased in weight, the swinging box design was the improvement that tipped the balance in favor of attack. So the great wall-busting siege engine Edward employed at Stirling Castle was almost certainly a trebuchet with a giant swinging counterweight. A weapon that dominated siege warfare for 200 years. It was not until the late 15th century, the end of the Middle Ages, that the superiority of cannon clearly emerged, and the trebuchet vanished into the mists of time.